crikey, pushing this barrow full of sweet potato is hard yakka. Better put him down and have a rest. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of sweet potato in a garden bed just like this one. Let's get into it. In our subtropical climate, sweet potato is one of the few vegetables that you can grow all year round. Unlike regular potatoes, which can only be grown at certain times. Did you know that sweet potatoes isn't related to potatoes at all? In fact, it's part of the morning glory family of climbing plants, which are known more for flowers than tubers. I don't know about you guys, but in my circles, morning glory means something completely different. But let's not elaborate on that. Nevertheless, we've been growing sweet potato for over a decade and I've only seen the vines flower a handful of times. But we don't grow it for the flowers. And even though the leaves are edible and can be used like spinach, we mainly cultivate this excellent and easy to grow backyard vegetable for its deliciously nutritious tubers. Tip number one, propagating. This here is a sweet potato cutting that I've grown in a pot for about three or four weeks. Some common types of sweet potato are white skin with white flesh, purple flesh, and the other two I've grown are the orange with orange flesh and red or purple skin with white flesh. I haven't noticed much difference in taste between the orange and these white flesh varieties, except the orange ones might be a little bit sweeter, and these white flesh varieties with the red or purple skin tend to have a better pest resistance overall. Well, that's just what I've found anyway. There are several ways to produce new sweet potato plants. You can use a full tuber like this, and this is how we first started growing sweet potato. We simply bought a tuber from the store and planted it into the garden bed and off it sprouted and grew like crazy. You could also start a tuber in a pot and then plant it out once it's growing well or place a tuber in a container or glass with some water and after about a month it will sprout from several places. You can then harvest these what they call slips like cuttings to make several new plants. Sweet potato cuttings take root very easily. You can directly plant them into the garden where you want them to grow and keep well watered, they should strike. Or place the cuttings in a pot with premium potting mix and they'll soon start growing well, like this one here. We have a wild area down the back there that acts like a ground cover. So if we ever need fresh propagation material, we just take some cuttings, pot them up, and then plant them out to where we want them. Tip number two, planting. We like to plant sweet potato in its own bed or a container. And I say sweet potato is easy to grow, but in some climates like ours, hot subtropical, it grows so well that it can actually be hard to control. We even need to attack it with a whippersnipper to stop it taking over the whole veggie patch. And this vigorous growth habit is something you should take into consideration if you're thinking about planting sweet potato with other crops because its vigorous nature will take over the bed and suffocate out most other plants. This bed here though, having said all that, is a really good example of how I underplanted sweet potato and then grew other crops on top, such as tomatoes and salad greens. And when those other crops were finished, the sweet potato gradually took over the bed. As for positioning, sweet potato grows best in full sun, but it will also grow quite well in part shade. In cool or cold climates, grow sweet potato as an annual through the hottest part of the year, planting out into the garden after the last frost and give it as long as possible to grow before harvesting. There apparently are faster growing varieties for shorter seasons that are better suited to growing in colder climates. So if you do live in a cool climate, 
perhaps try experimenting with these shorter season varieties. You can train sweet potato vines up a trellis or let it sprawl over a garden bed. I prefer the latter because sprawling sweet potato vine is a good weed suppressant and growing it up a structure can unnecessarily shade out other plants. The other important tip about letting the vine spread over the ground is this method allows it to take root in other places and these can develop into tubers resulting in larger harvests. Tip number three, crumbly loose soil. Now soil will compact over time so these beds were prepared about 12 months ago but let's have a look and see how well the soil is. Yeah it's still pretty good in here. I didn't set this up it's nice and crumbly, no problems. I'm sure it's compacted a little more in other places, but the bottom line is sweet potato really loves soil that's full of organic matter and crumbly. It hates hard ground or clay soil, and it particularly detests water logging. Boggy ground and overwatering will just produce rotten tubers. Crumbly loose soil with lots of rich organic matter is the way to go and the best way to start your sweet potato crop. If the soil in the bed has compacted down over time, I recommend loosening the top 30 centimeters by forking and digging. Fertilize initially, but not regularly because you want the plant to root down and create tubers for its own storage food reserves. Over fertilizing will get lots of top growth but not as many tubers. Sweet potato will often grow close to the surface, but hard soil will force the tubers up and out of the topsoil, which can make them perish, crack, and become exposed to pests such as rodents chewing on them. Tip number four, pest and disease control. I've already mentioned how rodents and other animals like to eat sweet potato tubers. And some produce loss should be expected from time to time because that's just how it is, especially for organic backyard growers. Same with the leaves. Don't worry about grasshoppers or caterpillars eating and damaging the leaves unless the vine is totally getting stripped, which is very unlikely. In this case, you could use an organic chewing insect spray and just spray it over the leaves but 99% of the time, the plant will survive fine on its own, even with plenty of damage from insects. So intervention really isn't required. Sweet potato is one of the best pest resistant plants I grow, and it can be grown in the same location for several seasons in a row. However, I do recommend finding a new garden bed to plant it in about every two to three years. The main reason for this is to prevent an accumulation of soil-borne pests and diseases that will develop over time. Things like slugs, borers, nematodes, and fungal diseases can be drastically reduced through crop rotation. Tip number five, harvesting. In this tip, I wanna take you through a practical example using this garden bed here of how I routinely grow sweet potato, starting from harvesting right through to refurbishing and replanting back into the same garden bed. When it comes to harvesting the tubers, the first thing I do is remove the top vine growth to expose the bare soil. And you may already see the tops of some tubers emerging from just below the surface, giving clues as to where they have accumulated in the garden bed. Using a fork and digger, I systematically dig the garden bed, removing all the sweet potato tubers and the roots that are confined. Depending on how compacted the bed is, a garden fork might not be practical. So using a hand digger is sometimes easier and there's less chance of stabbing the tubers. But you still must be careful when digging the bed as it's easy to accidentally damage buried tubers. As I go along, I separate any stringy roots and old damaged tubers from the good tubers that we wanna keep for eating. Personally, I prefer tubers that are under eight inches long 
because we find that anything too big can get a little bit fibrous and aren't as enjoyable to eat. I also feel the tubers to make sure they're hard and heavy for size and discard tubers that are light or spongy. Tubers selected for eating can be stored for weeks if not months in a cool dry place. What I usually do after harvesting is I lay these tubers out in the sun for about half a day and it just seals off any areas that have been broken and then they store better. Once I've finished harvesting and I'm satisfied the whole bed is dug with topsoil loosened, I roughly chop up the discarded sweet potato and along with the saved roots, I spread them evenly over the bed. Some of these tubers will sprout to form new plants and others will decay, turning into fantastic worm food and nutrients for the next crop. I do the same with the old vines, most of which will compost down and enrich the bed. Then I liberally spread some organic fertilizer around, a good quality blood and bone is excellent, or homemade manures like chicken poo from the coop is even better. Finally, I top with some compost and or more garden soil, and in this case, I used a commercial bag product and then finished with a good covering of mulch, like sugarcane, loosen leaves or even wood chip and that's it those were my five top tips on how to grow a ton of sweet potato in one garden bed such as that remember propagating planting crumbly loose soil pest and disease control and harvesting do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of sweet potato just like i can if you like this video make sure you give it a big fat sweet thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and share the video around too because that helps my channel heaps now do you have any questions on growing sweet potato or do you have any tips further tips you'd like to share whack them down in the comment section below because i'd love to read them thanks a lot for watching bye for now how sweet it is to finish this video in such a windy day. Sweet. Sweet, cuzzy bro. That's sweet. Sweet as. Sweet as a nut. Sweet as potato.